Hey, there's back with another video. So on this one, I want to talk about the Leeds game. Obviously, we know we won one 0 but it was a very difficult game, very ugly performance from us. Um, eventually, we got the goal. Um, we won one 0 despite the fact they created a lot of chances and created a lot of situations. But let me just go through some of the things that I saw from the game, just to you know, just to get into why I think the game went the way it did. So the first thing was, um, as I mentioned. From the United game, um, one or well, the biggest issue in that game was the high line with the pressure not being good enough. So, because the way we play, we play with a lot of um, physical um, intensity in terms of how we uh, try to control the games. So, if we're not able to pressure the team properly, or if we don't have the right intensity to do that, then we're, we're not going to be early to our press. We're not going to be there in time. We're not going to be able to win the ball back. And then teams are going to be able to play against us properly. And when you have a high line, and your press is not as good you're just going to expose all the space behind and what um what Leeds did really well is and i've mentioned as well before is that the teams that sit deep against us those aren't the teams that are going to trouble us the teams that are going to trouble us are the ones who actually want to play because when teams are sat deep it takes away all the stuff that we have to do in the build up play or trying to bypass their pressure it takes away the fact that we're trying to build and arrive in the final third and just puts us in the final third into where we actually want to be and then we can start trying to break teams down but the teams that actually want to play against us and are actually going to push up and try to attack us those are the teams we're actually going to struggle against and in this game, we played a team who wanted to play against us. They wanted to push up. They wanted to attack us. And what they did was, because our press wasn't good and we weren't able to get there in time to win the ball back, they just kept attacking our channels. They kept doing this over and over, on, over, and over again the whole game. Every time we tried to press, we were late to the press. Our intensity was really poor. The press was really poor. We kept arriving late to the man. And then we couldn't even deal with the um the second ball after they tried to bypass our press and they went straight into the into the channels they literally kept on playing the balls behind our wingers so obviously we play with the five attackers and the five defenders but at this point we we're trying to attack so we still have the five defenders behind the ball and the five attackers but they kept on attacking the channels using their wingers to run to make um, runs in behind they kept playing with a lot of cutbacks a lot of combination play so that was the issue that we had against against Leeds and um for me, I thought that Ramsdale was the man of the match. He made a lot of great saves. Um, not Obviously, not to do the penalty, but just overall, when they had a lot of chances, that they had some 1v1 situations, he was there. I remember, I remember one time where he actually got the ball. I thought it could have been a penalty, but it wasn't, luckily. But he got both hands on the ball quickly. He got the ball back. I think it was from Bamford. Uh, but yeah, that was what we had to um, that we had to deal with. So why I feel like this happened in terms of our pressing, I feel like... We just couldn't match their intensity. And I think their manager spoke about this after the game as well. He said they played at such a high intensity and knowing that we were coming back from Europa League after the travels, we might not be able to match that. And they played as though they understood that we were not going to be able to play at a certain level consistently over 90 minutes. So they played to that strength, which is also their strength as well because they also a team that played with a lot of intensity who press as well. And they did this really, really well and we just couldn't match it. And we tried and we tried and we tried, but we couldn't, um, which is why we kept on getting dominated. I feel like one of the issues here is obviously because we're playing on Thursday in the Europa League, and a lot of the times if you look at our depth, and I'm going to do another video separately in terms of how we can actually maintain consistency and depth is a part of it. Um, we're having to play one of our starting centre backs in the Europa League. We're having to play one of our starting wingers in the Europa League. We're playing our ten in the Europa in the Europa League. I think we had four players in the Europa League who also played in the league as well. And throughout the Europa League, we've had um, the likes of Saka or Martinelli playing. We've had the likes of Saliba or Gabriel or Ben White playing. These are the kind of players that we don't need to be playing these kind of games. Um, because there's no there's no need for it when we know that these are teams obviously we're not um discrediting these teams but you have to be able to manage it you have to be able to understand that okay maybe our second team is good enough to win these games whilst we can rest our first team for the bigger games in the Premier League where we need to be more consistent especially knowing that we don't have depth in certain areas but for me I think that was one of the issues I think we just couldn't match the intensity due to the game on Thursday even the ones that didn't play they obviously most likely they trained as, uh, trained as well so that's going to affect everything also um, another thing from the game also is how we defended obviously the perform we, we won ugly in this game I think we've showed that we can't actually win ugly but in terms of defending when we started a game, we were trying to match them, which is how we try to play. We're trying to match them physically, trying to match them, their intensity. But it reached a point in the game whereby I think we started to realise that it wasn't possible and they were starting to dominate, they were starting to create chances. Eventually, we ended up dropping deep, but this was very late in the game. And I've, I've already said before, when we're sat deep and when we drop deep into this 4-4-2 shape, we're very organised. That's one thing that, that's, been, that's been consistent since Arteta came here, is that we're able to defend really deep. It's just that we don't want to, which is not because it's not the best way to win or the best way to defend. 
But when we do eventually, or if we are forced into this situation, we're very good at defending deep and protecting the back line, staying organised, um, keeping teams at bay and reducing the amount of shots to happen. So we eventually had to do this late in the game and we showed that we can do this, which is something that might be useful in a bigger game if we end up being dominated in those games. So um, the last thing I will go into is Gabriel. I spoke about him a lot already. I said already, for me, his strength is also his weakness. He plays with a lot of passion, plays with his heart and his sleeve, plays with a lot of emotion. And at times, he lets this get to him. Because at the end of the day, you have to remember that this, it doesn't matter how much defensive skills you've got or anything. If you lack the composure and concentration or if you allow your emotion to detract from your, your concentration and your composure, it's going to affect your performance. Because this is the reason why the best defenders in the world, some of them can play to the age of 36. Look at Thiago Silva who continues to play to his older. It's not because he has more um, all these other physical qualities left because he's become slower now, but it's because he still has the composure and the concentration. And you, those are really those are key things. A lot of defending is not so much of of the of um the contact. A lot of defending is so, is more about the reading of the game, what happens off the ball, your positioning. And when you're so emotionally invested in things like this, that would affect how you read the game. That would affect what you do. That would affect your decision making. It's not all the time. You don't have to go into every challenge. You don't have to go into every 50-50. At times, you can back off and accept that the team are, are going to deal with it. But this is something that Gabriel needs to learn. And I think it will come with experience as well. But anyways, I'm going to do another video just to talk about maintaining that consistency. But for this one, see you guys.